Good morning. So here we are again in our series as we're talking about our favorite verses, our playlist of God's verses that we cling to, that we hold on to, that give us life, that inspire us. And I wonder if you have a favorite verse yet, if there's a verse that you cling to that gives you life and that, that helps you as you go through difficult circumstances. Well, next week, we are going to be blessed as our Director of Missions and Belonging, Claudia, is going to be bringing the word, and she's going to be talking about the parable of the Good Samaritan next week. Uh, For today, though, we're going to take a look in the book of Philippians, and I would love to encourage you to open your Bibles, your devices to the book of Philippians at this time. There's extra Bibles by the doors if you need to get up. Go ahead and get up. Don't leave, but get up and get a Bible and then make your way back. Let's open our Bibles, our devices uh, to the book of Philippians, and we're going to take a look at Philippians together. But before we look at our favorite verse, I just want to show you the breadth of what Paul writes in the book of Philippians, and maybe we'll have a new verse after we take a look at Philippians. So look at chapter 1, if you have your Bibles open. Chapter 1, verse 21, may this be a new verse for you, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Skip ahead to chapter 2, verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. It sounded like the call to worship that we had a little bit ago. Chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. 2, verse 14. Do a few things without complaining or arguing. Maybe that's a life verse. Chapter 3, verse 8, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ my Lord. Chapter 3, verse 10, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Chapter 3, verse 12, the last part, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of for me. Chapter 3, verse 14, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Chapter 3, verse 20, our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, I wonder if we could use that one today, our citizenship. 4, verse 4, okay, leave that behind. 4, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Could that be a life verse for you? 4 verse 5, let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near, and so do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. 4 verse 7, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 4 verse 8, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Last example would be 4 verse 9. And of course, there are more in this book. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you, Paul says. So I wonder in those few examples if you found a new verse that you can cling to, that you can hold on to, that will help you through the circumstances that maybe you indeed are facing. Well, we're gonna take a look this morning at our favorite verse, which is uh, Philippians 4, verse 13 this morning. And so I'd love to direct your attention, if you would, in the Bibles that you have to 4, verse 13. But before we do that, take a look this week as I was on Facebook, which I don't do very often. That's a joke. I was on Facebook and this is what Pastor Craig Rochelle had. And I think I have a picture. Is it back one? Can we go back one or no? Okay, Uh, no, I guess we don't have it. Pastor Greg Rochelle from Life Church, one of the biggest churches growing in America today, posted Philippians 4 verse 13 as his life verse. And I thought how awesome that is as God's scripture echoes and as it comes together and as it it finds shape and direction together. But we're gonna take a look at Philippians 4 verse 13 and I would love to invite you to stand with me. And we're actually gonna listen to 10 through 13. So Philippians 4... Philippians 4, verses 10 through 13, our verse for this morning will be the last one, verse 13. So listen to these words from God this morning. Philippians 4, verse 10, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. 
I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And then our verse four today is verse 13. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Will you join me in prayer at this time? Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for how rich it is and how not only is it just words and information, Lord, but it's your message to us this morning. And Father, we pray that you'd help us to clear our minds, to clear our, our consciences, Lord, of whatever is getting in the way so that we can hear you ever so clearly this morning. We give you thanks for your word, Lord, and pray that you would transform our hearts by this word this morning as we learn what it means to be able to do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Jesus, we love you and we thank you that you gave us an example of how to live. We pray this in your name alone and all of God's children say, amen. Have you ever wondered, can I really do everything? Have you ever read Philippians 4.13 and said, I can do everything? I mean, when you see a famous singer like this guy, do you know who this guy is? No, it's not me. <laughs> Just kidding. Can you imagine if I could sing like him? But I should be able to because scripture says I can do all things. I mean, imagine if I could preach and sing or maybe just one of them. You choose which one. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a year. Right? Imagine, yeah. <laughs> I'll slip those in. Imagine if I could sing like Michael Buble. Holy smokes, right? But I think God knows that if I could, I would get a big head and I wouldn't be humble. And, or, or how about this one? Have you ever watched professional tennis players and you're like, that just looks so easy. I mean, it could be so easy to be able to play like those particular players do. I mean, so let's be honest with each other. I don't know why my arrow doesn't have a pointer on it. That guy in the top is me. That's 1989, right? As I'm on the tennis team for Unity Christian High School and I thought I was... I thought I was pretty bad. You know how I thought I was pretty bad? Look at the next picture. What do you notice behind my head? A mullet. <laughs> Those were in in 1990, right? So as you hit the ball, your hair would kind of feather behind you. Can we take that screen down? Yeah, thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, let's close this. No, let's go and pray. Okay. I was even a ball boy for some of the professional players as we would go on vacation. We would go to Hilton Head Island and we would vacation and I got um, signogra or autographs from the Williams sisters. Do you know how famous the Williams sisters are when they were playing doubles? And now they're actually playing singles and I don't know if you have seen what's happened this week at Wimbledon, but as you watch it, don't you watch it and go, I could totally do that because I can do all things. Young girl, age 15, let's watch what happened in her first match this week earlier. What a moment in Wimbledon today. Imagine you're 15 years old and you are going to play your idol, someone who won her first Wimbledon title before you were even born. It happened today. The Wimbledon fans erupted in cheers after they watched 15-year-old Corey Goff, the youngest player in the tournament, easily defeat five-time Wimbledon champion Venus Williams in straight sets. She just told me that, uh, congratulations. Golf had to win three qualifying matches just to get the chance to play her idol. By the time she was born in 2004, Williams had already won four Grand Slam titles, including two at Wimbledon. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. Um, and I was just saying, telling her that she's so inspiring. And I always wanted to tell her that. And this is Serena's post. Golf, who is a resident of Delray Beach, Florida, grew up admiring the Williams sisters. She first picked up a racket at the age of seven. By the time she was 13, she was the youngest player to reach the girls' finals at the U.S. Open, where she finished second. During this Wimbledon match, her parents were on the edge of their seats. I know they're super happy. My dad uh, was just jumping up every time I won a point. She is still in high school and turned pro last year. She also became the youngest player to win the girls' singles championship at the French Open last year. 
Her success at the age of 15 has already caught the eye of some major sponsors. I never thought this would happen. I'm literally living my dream right now. And she's still winning this week. She continues to win, but let's be honest. Have you watched her this week and thought, I could totally do that? <laughs> have you ever watched golf? Any of you golfers in here and thought, I could totally do that? Right? The Bible says I can do all things, and so you should be able to. Is that what Paul's saying? Let's take a look at what he's saying. And if you're like me, you've been confused possibly by this phrase. I can do all things. I can do anything. But is it because of God's lack of love for me or my lack of faith that I haven't been able to turn pro? If I can do all things? I mean, what are you able to not do? What is it that you hope to do and you, you can't do? Did you hope to make the high school team or the college team and you didn't? Did you hope to get a raise or a particular job that you worked really hard for and you know you're gifted for and it just didn't come together? Or are you in debt and you just, you can't seem to get past? Or is there an illness you're struggling with and you think, God, if I can do all things, then how come dot, 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 you fill in the end of that? Is Paul saying that he can do all things in his own strength. Is that what he's saying? One author says this. The author says this. Many translations give the impression that Paul meant he could do anything, and that's how I felt when I was a kid, and that nothing was beyond his power. But the real meaning of this or any word is determined by its context. It's what comes before the verse, and it's what comes after the verse that determines and gives the verse particular meaning according to that author. So what comes after? Well, I can do all things, and then what does Paul say after? Through Christ, who gives me strength. So I can do all things only through him who strengthens me for the task that indeed is before me. So really, you could read, you could read uh, uh, Paul's verse in a different way if you understand that he, he, what he's saying is it's kind of a paradox, and he's saying this on the screen. He's saying that, Independence actually comes when you're dependent. It's really a paradox that Paul is saying. When you're dependent on him, then you become more independent, Paul is saying. So really, you could read verse 13 almost like this. I have the power to face all such situations in union with the one who continually infuses me with his strength. So I can do all things when he infuses me with the strength that he has for me for the task that he set before me. You know, I often find, um, I don't know if you do this, but if there's a verse in scripture I wanna know more about, I often will read different translations of it to see how the different translations kind of portray it. It's very helpful. Take a look at what the King James Version says about Philippians 4.13. King James Version says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. And by the way, on my computer, strengtheneth always comes up with a red underline because it's spelled wrong. Can't correct it. NIV, the 78 or 84 version says this, I can do everything, and this is the one I grew up memorizing. So little Marshall thought, he can do everything through him who strengthens me. And then the new NIV, which came out, the new translation in 2011 says, I can do all this. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So what is the all this in the 11 version? Context. What comes after? I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all these things that are in front of me by the power of Christ who indeed strengthens me. And then what comes before it? Paul says in verse 12, I've learned to be content. It's almost as if Paul is saying, I can be content with Jesus because he gives me strength. That's what Paul really is saying, not that I can jump a mountain or be Michael Buble or be Corey Goff or... But no, indeed, I can be content because Jesus gives me strength. Content before, strength infused afterwards, Paul is saying. Well, then we can't miss in verse 12, he says this, I've learned the secret of being content. Raise your hand if you've learned the secret of being content. Nobody's content? Yeah, there are some of us who've learned what it means to be content. And if you have learned it, let me ask you, have you shared it? And not to be pompous, not to be arrogant, but to say, I can face any situation because he's the one who gives me strength. 
He's the one who infuses in me exactly what I need, regardless of what situation I face. Okay, I can't sing like Michael Buble, we know that. Sometimes my microphone gets left on on a Sunday and you all know that. I can't play like Corey Goff, but we can't sell God short either. We can't sell him short either. He is big enough that he can do, if he wanted me to sing like Michael Buble, he could. If he wanted me to play like Corey Goff, he would. If he wanted a man to walk on water, you bet he would. If he wanted a guy who, whose body was deteriorating in a grave after three days, if he wanted that guy to walk, he could do it. If he wanted to feed 5,000 people with a little lifesaver in my pocket, he could do it. And I have two lifesavers. If he wanted to part the sea so God's people could walk through, he would, these are not just stories, folks. These are real life events that have happened in God's word. If he wanted to calm a storm, he could do it. If he wanted to do something extraordinary with your life, he could do it. He could do it if that's what he desired and that's what he wanted. And that's who he is. That's my God. Is he your God today? And if so, why not? Why isn't he the one who's empowering and infusing you each and every day? We have a God who gives us not what we want, but what we need. I think of Abraham who is offered, a, who's asked to offer a sacrifice and at the last moment, God provides a lamb. By the way, did he provide a bull in that moment? No, he provides a lamb, a story, a picture. I think of food falling from the sky. Can you imagine if God did that at the Coast Guard Festival? <laughs> would we be talking about it? What would be the food you would choose? Or imagine if water came out of a rock. He did it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a pillar of fire being in front of your car as you travel to Wisconsin for a vacation? Or a pillar of smoke by day? Can you imagine? If our God chooses to do that, he can indeed do that. Imagine if God chose a Christian woman for me when I felt like there wasn't anybody out there for me. He can do that. God can provide exactly what we need, not necessarily what we want. I think of the three children that God has blessed me with. He does indeed provide. I think of an opportunity to serve you all for a year. Well, what is God doing? I didn't even know this church was here four years ago. How is God gonna provide for you that you can't anticipate? Be faithful and trust him and he will provide for you. You know, he provided a son at just the right time when the people couldn't see it coming to provide for their sins and to provide for forgiveness. He provides all that we need, not what we want. Scripture says this in verse 19. It says, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Jesus Christ. All your needs, not your wants. All your needs. Needs. And God also provides strength for us. Listen to this verse in 2 Corinthians. It says, For my power is made perfect in weakness. For when I am, you fill it in, for when I am weak, he is strong. Can you imagine that being your life verse for tomorrow? I want to seek to be weak today so that he will empower and infuse and equip. We don't do that, do we? We start each day, I'm ready. And Paul says that when I am weak, then he is indeed strong. There's one person in this church who chose Philippians 4, verse 13. There's a bunch of you. But one person said this, this verse, Philippians 4, 13, is special to me because it helped me get through some very tough times, a very painful divorce, a couple of job losses. And so I leaned heavily on my faith in Christ for help and he gave me the strength to make it through those uncertain times. I love how this person said he gave me strength in uncertain times. He infused me with strength when I didn't know and when I felt alone. I wonder if this is what Paul meant when he said this. Ephesians. It says, now to him who is able. He is able. Does it mean he's going to? He's able. He's able to do more, immeasurably more than we could ask or even imagine 
according to his power that is at work within us. What is God planning to do in your life that you can't even imagine if you would just trust in him and allow him to infuse that into your life? Would you trust in him that much? Well, one author says this. He says, Paul didn't allow his weakness to be an excuse for inactivity. It also wasn't a failure to attempt. He didn't allow it to become a failure to attempt the impossible task. And the author says this, for the work is great, the work that is before us, but the help is equal to the task. God who calls you, even though he is high, lends you his hand. I don't know what you're facing today, but God who is our help is stronger and can do immeasurably more. And I don't know why he's not, but our job isn't to wonder, it's to rely. It's to trust in, it's to provide our faith in him, as scripture tells us. So God is the one who empowers me, and there are times when he doesn't empower me, and I'm not really sure why. There are times when things don't make sense in my life, and I wonder why he wouldn't let me be a professional singer or a professional, and I don't know exactly why he does what he does, but Philippians 4 reminds me, which is helpful, it says, and the peace of God, so in those moments when I can't understand The peace of God comes in, it infuses itself into us by the power of the Spirit. It says, in the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, there's going to come a moment where you don't understand and where you don't know, but God's peace will guard your hearts and your minds. And I love that verse. And as I can't figure things out, as I wonder, as I struggle, he's going to guard my heart. So the desires that I have, the the tendencies I have, he's going to guard that. But then it also says he's going to guard your mind so that you don't start to wonder and wander and and get off track from his purposes that he has for each of us. So I don't know if you're facing something right now and you're saying, can I do all things? And you're wondering why he's not allowing you to. Well, here's the prayer that I often use. I often will say to myself or to God, I'm not sure why this is so hard, God, but I do know that you transcend all understanding and that you give peace. And so help me, Lord, to be at peace. Help me to find contentment in this situation, even though you're not answering in the way that I desire. What has God been teaching you from his word? What have you learned in this series so far that you've clung to, that you've held on to, that you've learned from, that you want to take hold of? What's your life verse, and how will it help you face circumstances? Do you have a verse that's special? Maybe you don't have one. Maybe you have a whole bunch of them. Maybe you've never even thought about having one. Can you find one this week that will be helpful as you face what you face? When a tough situation comes this week, how will you face it? You are going to face something. Will you face it by clinging in your own? Will you face it by clinging onto somebody else or something? Or will you face it by clinging onto him? and holding on to the handles that he has preset in place for you. Will you be able to say, as we said earlier, I do have the power to face all situations in union with him because he continually infuses me with strength. As you face this week, may you face it with the one who infuses inside of you the strength to be okay if it doesn't go your way, but to know that he is still with you. Let's join together in prayer at this time. And so, Father, we do give you thanks that we are not alone, but that you are with us, and that no matter what we face, Lord, we can face it knowing that you are at the center, that you provide exactly what's needed for us, Lord, as your people and as we face difficult situations. Father, we know that for each of us, we have difficulties around the corner, and they can come at any moment. Sometimes those difficulties, Lord, are just one test away, one doctor visit away, one biopsy away, one evaluation away. And as we receive word, Lord, of difficulty, help us to face it knowing that you are capable. Father, we think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who said that you may not rescue them, but if you choose to or choose not to, we will continue to praise you. Father, you are faithful. Your love is constant and you never leave our side. Help us, Lord, to be able to say that we want you, Jesus Christ, to be at the center of our lives. 
Father, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus Christ's name alone and all of God's children say,